So everyone, your teacher, the auntie who runs a company, tells you that you should be on LinkedIn. So you created an account with an email, your formal email, that is not ilovecookies555 at gmail.com. And... Then what? Should you copy and paste a resume? What do you write in the bio? What's a headline? So you chuck it to the side and never to be seen on your web browser again. Now, many of us have been there. LinkedIn can be overwhelming. Even though they claim to be a social media company, the stakes seems to be so much higher than, say, our Facebook or Instagram profiles. So here are some tips from me as a LinkedIn content creator about ways you can start um, optimizing a LinkedIn profile. Alright, so this is what you would see when you first open your LinkedIn on your desktop. I will use my account as an example. So you would see the LinkedIn feed. This is in the middle where everyone would make their posts and you can see them. One thing to note about LinkedIn posts is that you see, for example, this LinkedIn post, you can actually see not just the posts made by people you follow and connect with, but also what they engage with. So you might see someone unknown on your feed and that might be because someone you know has liked or commented on their post. So that's something important to note for the next YouTube video on LinkedIn branding for beginners, where I'll talk more about engagement and building a brand. So for today, we'll focus more on profile. So you can click on me, view profile. So at the top, you would see first thing is the banner and then your profile photo followed by your name and your headline. So with first impressions, you will want all of these things to be as appealing to your audience as possible. And the keyword is on to your audience. So depending on your field, you might want your headlines to be different. For me, I want people to know that I'm a career coach specifically for international students. And I'm also an activist um, in the DEI space. I also included a link where people can find not just my website, but also my social media and um, ways to support and past projects. I also make sure that my headline is something that is visually appealing and also, again, re-emphasize what I do. So I included my logo and also um, with like animated people of different skin color, different hairstyles, different styles to represent uh, what I want to see in the future of the workforce, as I mentioned in the hit. And with name, it can be pretty straightforward. For me, for example, my first name is Sin Yi, and if I put a space in between, when people tag me in posts, sometimes LinkedIn will just shorten it to Sin instead of Sin. To make all of the changes, just click on the pencil button on the top right, and you see this window with all the necessary fields. And you can also make a voice recording of your name. It'd be good for you to include your pronouns as well, even if you're cisgender and especially if you're cisgender. This is to normalize the use of pronouns for our fellow LGBTQ plus peers who may use they, them or a different pronoun than the typical she, her, he, him and they, them. And the headline, this is where you would change it. Pretty straightforward, you just type it in. It's important to consider that this might affect your SEO, which stands for search engine optimization. So for example, if you want to be known as a accounting professional, then it might be better to put accounting professional. This is something that a lot of students tend to leave out in terms of they would just put, um, oh, I'm a undergraduate in business analytics at Suffolk University. Problem is unless the recruiter is looking for someone from your school or your specific major, you will most likely be left out. And even with major, sometimes majors can have different names. Um, like for example, for me, my major is big data and business analytics. A lot of majors don't have the big data part and don't have the analytics part or the business analytics part, some of them may be known as data analytics, then if I were to put that as my, I might be missed out um, when the recruiters do their search. So it's critical for you to put a headline that appeals to your profession rather than reflecting who you are now. So with the current position, it adapts from your experience section below. And then education is where you studied and left it out. But if you want to, you can check this box and 
your school will be shown. You can leave out postal code and locations if you would like. And for, but for me, um, I tend to leave it in because um, in case anybody would want to search me up and based on location, they can find me. And then with the industry, um, choose something that is as close to your industry as possible. And then with contact info, is where people can learn more about you other than your LinkedIn. So I have my website over here. You can add your phone number. Some people do add their business phone numbers for easier access. Um, I don't. Um, I also have my email address where people can reach me as well. So that is for the top section where you make your first impressions. Unless you um, check the creator mode to be on, you will not have this. So you don't have to worry about this. Scrolling down, this is your dashboard. Like they mentioned, it's private to you, so you don't have to worry about it. And your featured section. So the featured section will be very helpful if you have done school projects that you're really proud of that will apply to the career that you want to look for. You can always um, hit the plus button and um, insert them here and people will see it right after your headlines and your profile picture. You can also include posts that you have previously written. Um, and feature them. Really use this, like it, like as it mentioned, the, a feature wall where what are the first few things you want um, your audience or your recruiters to see. And then activity is where they can see what you have posted, but also where you have commented and engaged with. So this is something that I always highlight in terms of be very careful of what you write. When I see some comments on some posts, they are not just, they're very harmful. They sound very narrow-minded and this is not something that you want your recruiters to see. So always be mindful that on LinkedIn, anyone can see what you have been up to, what not just what you posted, but also what you've commented on and what did you write. And then finally, on the about section. You can be creative with this. You can be straightforward like myself, saying who I am and what my mission is. You can also include some of the past projects that you have. My tip for you with the about section is that you can look at people that you admire. How do they formulate their about section? What do they include in their about section? And then try to model it from there. And with experience, you can get creative with this section. Some people like to copy and paste their resumes on here and that's perfectly fine. I have been experimenting around and I find that the few sentences kind of like fit me best because number one, I don't want anybody to see my resume and feel like, oh, it's the exact same thing as her LinkedIn and then kind of like breeze through it or not even look at it. The second thing is that when Users look at your LinkedIn profile, they will want to get the information they want to see within seconds. So I find the best way to do that is to have a few short sentences on some career highlights. And then with education, pretty straightforward. Um, indicate your school, your degree, field of study, start and end date. If you want, you can include your grades. I would recommend not including it if you are below a 3 or even a 3.5. And then activities and societies. This is something that you can leverage on that I don't see a lot of students leveraging or using. So you can write down what roles you have played. This can be your involvement with certain student organizations, your volunteer activities, and also school projects that you have done. And with the description, this is also where students get done for a lot. They have a question of, isn't the name of a major enough? Isn't it self-explanatory? Well, this is a chance for you to demonstrate what you are good at specifically in terms of your major. So for me, I included what I got high distinctions in. I also particularly highlight what I would like people to know about me in terms of myself as a student. Um, and so this is a perfectly good chance for you to do that. And with media, you can include presentations, PDFs, the reports you have done, any features that you have had in school, your school publication, and we can even link the description with the media in terms of um, writing that, hey, I've done this project in marketing. Please refer it to the media below, you know, and kind of make it coherent. So that's the education section. Licenses and certification, you can actually get um, certifications by LinkedIn on LinkedIn Learning, which is over here on the top right. 
a lot of colleges now tend to already have membership for you. You just have to link your school account, um, LinkedIn Learning with your current LinkedIn account. And you will have a lot of access to a wide variety of different subjects. If you earn any other certifications, either through your curriculum, where sometimes, for example, in marketing, they might make you get the HubSpot certification, always remember to update and keep it in here because it might be a way for recruiters and other people who are in the similar field and interest to find you as well. Volunteer experience, if you have some, please do add them in because that would help demonstrate to organizations that you have a service mindset, that you like to offer your help, your skills to something beyond just um, compensated on a compensated basis, excuse me. And now on skills and endorsements, I always find it really interesting in ways of like, I treat this as almost like a yearbook. So after every semester, I wish it is something that I have done where I would, um, I could have asked my classmates to be like, hey, can you endorse me for certain skills that I have on my LinkedIn? This can help bump up again, your SEO or your searchability. When people search for certain things, if they, see that you've been endorsed by someone else, that would be very helpful. Same thing with recommendations. If you have a good relationship with a professor or an advisor um, for either your studies or your student organizations, be sure to ask them for a recommendation at least before you graduate um, or before they leave the organization. They can give people an idea of like, what is it? like to work with you what is it like to manage you as a team player and then accomplishments at any awards that you receive languages that you can speak into accomplishments because that can give people an idea and then interest is where if you follow any like notable people with the linkedin logo it will appear here or if in any groups that will appear here as well so overall my tip for linkedin beginners is to not overthink it. Try to fill in as much as possible and have a profile as, as enriched with information as possible. You would want people to have more information about you than less. I received this tip from one of my advisors in career services and it has stuck with me to this day. She says that if you include more information, they can always scroll past it. But if you don't have enough information, you may not pick enough interest for them to reach out to you. So don't overthink it, write what you think demonstrates you best, reflects you best, have fun with things like the headline, and edit it as you go. Don't overthink it and make it into this like perfect profile because there will always be changes. This is a live site, it's not something that is carved in stone. I myself have changed it multiple times throughout not just a, a year, but also throughout the month. So have fun with it. You will know that you're on the right track when you start attracting the people that you want that provides um, valuable content. The next few tips would be less about the profile, but more about connecting. So there are a few ways to, I would say, connect with someone. Other than the typical establish a connection, you can also follow someone. This is for people that you see content on, but you are not sure if you want to have them in your network and constantly see whenever they post. A follow is a good option. And if you want to connect with them, always try to leave a note. So when you press connect, a uh, window will pop up to say, um, write a note to this person to let them know. So when you write a note, be personable, write about why you're connecting with that person, what got you interested in connecting with that person. It could be at an event that they said something and that you want to know more. Um, oftentimes that would increase your chances of being accepted. I personally, for me, accept more invitation that has notes, even if I don't know them or I've never met them. Because knowing why someone wants to connect with me is important. So in that note, if you include where you got to know that person and why you're interested in connecting with that person will help you greatly increase your chances um, rather than someone who did not um, write any note about where they know them from and do not have any personal connections. Another thing you can do other than following and connecting with people 
is that you can follow certain hashtags and join groups. So the hashtags that you follow are over here and you would know if a post has come from the hashtag rather than someone you're connected with. You can also um, join certain groups that are of interest. I only start to join groups when I get invited by people in my circle. They're like, hey, we created this community and we'd like you to join. And I'll most, most likely join. And then same thing, you know, like just like Facebook group. If someone posted, you will see that. If someone created an event, you'll see that as well. Um, those are really great ways to start curating your feed into something that you want to see. Because at the start, it will all be about what LinkedIn wants you to see. And you want to make the algorithm work for you by following hashtags, following people, following groups that are to your interests, professionals who are posting what you want to see versus um, what LinkedIn um, feeds you. So that is all the tips I have for a LinkedIn beginner who have just created an account and are at a loss at what to do. Once again, have fun experiment. I'll be creating a part two to this video where I talk more about content creation and branding yourself on LinkedIn. Comment down below what has been the most helpful for you today and what would you like to see in the next video. Your feedback is invaluable. I want you to know that your feedback is really helpful in helping me create content that caters to you and help you in your career journey. So be sure to let me know what you want to see in the next video. And until then, I'll see you, take care, and stay safe. <laughs>